Well, hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this week's podcast, Go the Distance. And uh, we're so super excited that you've joined with us today to have some real raw conversations about real and raw life issues. And tonight, I am super excited to be joined by my friends, Billy and Heidi Cox. It's good to have you guys here in the studio at the be- beautiful confines of the Rock Creek <laughs> Ranch, as, as Josh Barrett, my friend says, the Rock Creek Ranch. Ranch. And um, But this is our little studio, little, little um, room here in our office where we've been shooting our podcast. Remember, you can check us out every Wednesday night, seven o'clock, um, Facebook Live, YouTube, um, you can Apple search us or right here by subscribing to the Go to the Distance podcast each week on your podcast app on your phone. So um, I've got Billy and Heidi here because uh, Billy and Heidi have known me for a lot of years. Uh, we've, we've got some skin in the game and we've got some trophies on the wall and, and um, we've, uh, we've experienced a lot of things together, um, things that uh, have been really some awesome times and then we've had some some crazy moments and some yeah. um, some fun times like um, Billy running smoke machines for me backstage <laughs> at an Easter Passion play and Heidi being involved in the choir and the drama team at my former life and my former ministry and and um, Billy and I kind of have a funny story of we always needed more smoke when Jesus would come out of the tomb. I mean, I wanted it to look yes. like it was a hookah hut in there, so you know, going on when Jesus come out of the tomb, and we'd run that thing, and then it would click off. It would recycle, and it would recycle. And I'm like, I need more smoke, Billy. And Billy would say over the headset, I can't give you no more smoke. It's recycled. It's recycled. And I kept, red. yeah, and I kept thinking we. We need to buy smoke machines that don't recycle. I don't know what the deal is. That was always, that's not been a source of conversation all yeah. through the years, yeah. too. Yeah. Yes. And then um, Billy and Heidi, and more in particular you, Heidi, you've seen me when I've been really, really, really frustrated with choir members or drama team members, and you've seen the, the, uh, the trademark vein pop up in my forehead right here, yeah. It also happens when I have to sing too high and hit a high note. That trademark okay. vein will pop out. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, you guys have been here at Rock Creek for many years, all the way back when it was COC Metro and yes. the school. And many years ago, you guys took the leadership role of, of Financial Peace University. And you guys do other things. You guys lead our guest services. And so if you get greeted on a Sunday morning or you get ushered on a Sunday morning or anybody smiles at you when you walk in or in the parking lot, this is the this is the couple that leads that amazing team. You guys do a great job. But Thank you. be, you're welcome. But beyond that, you guys lead Financial Peace University and you're passionate about it. Yes. So what I wanted to do tonight is talk a little bit about FPU. We we'll okay. call it FPU for short. That works. Uh, Dave Ramsey's program, probably most people are aware of what that is. But uh, talk a little bit about it, why you're passionate about it. Talk a little bit about how does it function and how does it work okay. and when you meet. And then when you're going to start meeting again and how someone can get registered for that. So let's start off with why, why is FPU something you're passionate about? What is it about FPU that, that makes you want to lead that and take of your time to lead people through it? And either one of you can answer. Well, we took it years ago and we learned a lot of things about, you know, what we were doing wrong and what we weren't doing at all. And it helped us, you know, I mean, it was like 18 years ago, you know. And then getting into, you know, come fast forward to now in the last four years, we've, uh, it just became something in our heart that it was paying, you know, a passion for us because here we are now in our life and it has, you know, helped us to get to where we are. We retired this year, a year earlier than we expected. Mm-hmm. And, and the finances is, is a big part of it. Being, you know, learning to be debt free, budgeting, doing the things that you need to do. But what we've seen is through the years that we've done the class and, and people come in and they're struggling. Mm-hmm. One of the things with, with financial problems, it causes a lot of other problems in a, a relationship or marriage or whatever or for an individual. Mm-hmm. And we've seen people go through the class that it struck a nerve. They bought into it. I say bought into it, but they, they just became, it became a way of life for them. Yeah. They and believed we, in the vision of it. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's a commitment. It's not a fast fix. It's a commitment. It's, a, it's dedication to be able to, you know, to do this. Mm-hmm. And we've seen people do that and we've seen lives changed yeah. in a lot of ways, Yeah, you know, not just the financial side. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it's been, and that's what, for both of us, is just really, uh, that's the part that just keeps us coming back. Now, Heidi, the, the actual class, Financial Peace University, is like mm -hmm. a window of time, but, but Financial Peace University is a lifestyle that you live, and you learn to live that in that, in that window of time. How many right. weeks is that window? Uh, it's a nine-week course. Okay. So it's once a week. We happen to do it on Sunday evenings here at Rock Creek Church okay. at 5 o'clock. Um, we start our, this will be our seventh, if I'm not mistaken, our seventh class. That's like Dancing with the Stars, it season is. seven. <laughs> season seven, here we are, here we absolutely. Are. Um, so that starts September the 13th okay. at, at 5 o'clock. Um, it is on the web, church website mm -hmm. as a, a group, Financial mm -hmm. Peace. Click on that, and it'll take you to where you need to go to sign up. Okay, so nine weeks mm -hmm. on Sunday evenings. How many hours on Sunday evening are, is someone who's attending taking the class here? Well, we block it out. We say an hour and a half, Okay. Uh, but we find sometimes that people will actually talk, so yeah. it may take two hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they people enjoy each other's company. Right, exactly. We, we don't hold it. That's just a guide. We just yeah. don't hold to that because people are sharing. Right. Let them share. So it's That's 90 right. minutes to two hours of, yes. of, mm -hmm. of a time frame on Sunday right. evenings yes. for nine weeks. And mm -hmm. at the end of that nine weeks, all your problems go away, right? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> like you take the class, you're completely out of debt, you're financially <laughs> free, and you have peace, yeah. and, and it's all, it's magically happens, right? You it, have you have a roadmap to continue. You have a roadmap <laughs> to continue. continue. Okay. It's kind of like a diet. Okay. You know, nine weeks of a diet yeah. is not going to solve all the problems yeah. because it has to be a lifestyle okay. change. Um, and this is a paradigm change in the way that people handle their finances. Okay. I know it was for me. Yeah. You know, we got married kind of late in life at 42 and had debt, mm -hmm. quite a bit of debt. Um, my fault. Okay. I admit it. But um, it's learning how to change that Okay. Um, and understanding that you manage your money or God's money, actually, mm -hmm. um, and that you know where it goes. Yeah. Exactly. So every dollar has a name. Yeah. yeah. Well, you need to know where your money goes. Yes. Uh, I, I read that the other day. I thought that not only does it rhyme, it makes sense. You need yes. to know where every dollar goes. Yes. And, um, you know, Dave Ramsey has this little saying, and I love little sayings because I can remember them and they stick with me. And I've we took Financial Peace University, Sarah and I did, my goodness, probably in 2009. Wow. And, and I've never forgotten this statement, live like no one else, so someday you can live like no one else. Yep. Mm -hmm. So tell me right now in y'all's in life, how are you living like no one else because you chose somewhere in the past to live like no one else? Give me an example. Of how well, that... I mentioned just a minute ago, we're 65 and we retired. You know, we, we were going to live to uh, work till we were 66 and then look at doing it there. I don't want to give any of my money, the money back that we put in Social Security back. And you lose 8% every year, you know, before your you know, full retirement. And then after full retirement, you gain 8% every year. So... We were talking to, we through this, we learned things. We have a financial advisor and a team and financial planners, and they helped us see and lay out a path for retirement and, and a lot of things that, you know, go into it. You know, it's not just the money side, it's your insurance. It's, you know, uh, uh, long-term care. It's the whole picture. There's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Like Dave says, there's an offensive side, which is get out of debt, and there's a defensive side to protect yourself after you do that. Yeah. And, 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 Right now, we're in a position that we did not think five years ago. Oh. I may have had more of an insight too because I was doing a lot of the numbers. I'm a numbers guy. And she was like, we sat down for financial planner and he put it on that big 60 inch TV. And she goes, we can do this. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then she just looked at me and she goes, I said, yeah. You know, <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't believe it. I'd worked for 50 years, right. you know, started when I was 15. Um, didn't really pay much attention to it, especially, you know, into my 20s and 30s and, and 40s. And you go through life changes, yeah. you know, whether you have kids or you go through a divorce or you get married, whatever that situation is. I never really thought about the money because yeah. I knew I was going to work, you know. And when he mentioned retirement, I went, mm, no. Yeah. So is retirement in your days that you've had now in retirement, it, is that better than that one hour commute one way to Fort Worth every day? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes. It is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One of the things when 
pandemic hit and you know the bottom fell out of the stock market and all these things going through setting down having a plan part of the plan is a contingency plan to show you if this very thing happened where you would be oh yeah and when that happened first thing she used do we need to go back to work and i went in <laughs> pulled up that little spreadsheet went in and showed it to her and said look at that she goes Oh, we're good. I went, yes. She goes, okay. So that was, uh, security is one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it is that gave us just the knowledge to know that even with things going south, you know, hadn't lost anything, but your portfolio doesn't look near as pretty. Yeah. So you, because of these things that you, decisions you made to allow you to retire, you you guys probably don't have any food to eat. You probably don't have a decent car or live in a home. Um, You probably have nothing, right? Uh, well, we haven't food, changed her. <laughs> we haven't, yeah, I mean, well, we haven't changed our lifestyle. So, We're, so, so, what did you change? Um, driving to Fort Worth, spending an hour and a half, you know, three hours total every day. That's one thing. It gave us time to uh, to do more at church. Whatever y'all need, we're all you know, we're there. Right. It's given us time to spend with our grandkids. Like right now. Yeah. Our grandson went through surgery. We're able to go up and take him. He doesn't have a vehicle at this point. We're able to go up and do things for our grandkids, to do things for our kids, whatever it so might be. So that's the change retirement has brought to you. But what are the changes that you made to allow you to not change your lifestyle but be able to retire? What are some of the things that you, you changed? Okay. Investing. You know, sitting down with a financial planner who's tied to uh, financial advisors and be able to make the right investments and they they set it up to where it minimizes our taxes and there's all different variables and that's a defensive side of what i was talking about earlier right. you know we did get debt free we did those things you know we have two new vehicles and you know there's no we have no you know payments payments on those okay they're paid for and you know and i'll say yes i'll say this just because of where we are and what you just asked we just went and bought a new vehicle 29 2019 vehicle and wrote a check for it. Those are some of the things that what we had done by investing, saving, okay. knowing where planning. our money's going okay. mm-hmm. and, and being able to, and to save more, you know, than we have ever in the past. Yeah. So Heidi, you guys probably, you guys probably got debt free mm-hmm. and got to this position in your life because you stopped giving to the Lord and took that money and paid off debt. Right? Oh no! Oh no! No! no. <laughs> you know, and I have because I, I have, think a lot of people think that's the first place I'll pull from. No. Well, and they do, and they think we've had the question come up in class: is okay, I'm having trouble making these payments. Do I stop tithing? Well, you know, Dave Ramsey's saying that you mentioned live like no one else, mm-hmm. so you can live and give. Ah, like no one else. So he has added that concept about what that means, you know, to tithe. And let's face it, th- this money is really not ours. It's God's. You know, he's allowed us to have that. It, it took me a while to fully understand about tithing um, and how important that is, not only for doing ministries, um, but how it's it's biblical. It's what yeah. God tells us to do. So that was one of the first things we did. And we have tons of stories that we feel that because we've tied, that things have not been near as bad. Situations like a water heater leaking yeah. just as a plumber is walking back to his truck after fixing something else. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, come back and fix this. So, I mean, there, there's there's a lot of that, that that goes into this. So we totally recommend and say, don't ever stop tithing. In yeah. fact, one of the things we hope when we do these classes that people will, one, if they haven't tithed, start. Yes. And two, if they have been tithing, give more. Yeah. And we you see know? that. Yeah. And, and we do. We and have seen that. That's one of the last questions on our last uh, deal survey. we do, survey we do. That is the questions that ask. Giving, now giving, giving more, or giving for the first time. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I think it's... At the heart of every follower of Christ, there's a desire to be extravagant in our giving because our God is an extravagant giver. Absolutely. But what I find, especially in the millennial generation and even in my generation, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a child of a boomer. So, mm-hmm. you know, what they call us, I think, Gen X, but, I, but yeah. I'm a buster. I've always known myself as a baby buster. Yeah. And so the baby buster generation and then those coming behind me, the millennials, um, what, I, what I find is, is that they they don't 
totally understand the concept of the, the beauty and the blessing and the joy of extravagant giving. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of that's because um, culture marketed to us heavy more than your generation or my parents' generation. They, yeah. they, they, the shiny object became what we were attracted to. And right. we, would, we would say, if I could have that, then my life would be complete. Yeah. And then we got that. And then something new came out two years later. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that never satisfied anymore. And so we have a whole generation of adults now who have not just done that with money. They've done that with with possessions. They've done that with people. They've done that in marriages. Um, You know, when it doesn't satisfy anymore, they just go get a new shiny object. Mm -hmm. What you don't realize about that, that new shiny object will be old too at some point. It won't satisfy. So all satisfaction, all contentment, all joy has to come. In, in your relationship in Christ and, and this idea that, oh, all the pastor wants at the church is my money. Uh, we have a saying, it's, it's hanging up in our lobby. It's not what we want from you, it's what we want for you. Mm-hmm. And time and time and time again, I watch people miss the joy of life because either they're not willing to give or when the opportunity comes to give, they can't mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because they've they've put themselves in a situation where they live 110% of 100%. Mm -hmm. And so Sarah and I, when we went through FPU, we began to try to really live disciplined where we would live on 80% Mm -hmm. and save 10 and give 10. And and what we've been able to do now in this season of life is give more than 10 out of the 10 that we saved. Yeah. Right. We're still living on the 80, but when an extravagant need comes up or or like um, a missionary comes and, and we want to be a blessing to that missionary yeah. individually, we pull from that 10% yeah. we saved. Exactly. And one of the ways we've been able to do some of this in our own personal life, and we have, we have a mortgage yeah. and we have one car payment, but we only have one car payment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For many years, we had mm-hmm. two car payments. And so what we learned is, and what I had to learn in particular, and so I'll take this one for the team, Sarah. <laughs> what I had to learn is I don't personally have to drive a high-dollar, newer model vehicle. I can drive an older model vehicle. I can drive a cash car, as Ramsey would call it. And we can have one nice vehicle yep. that's hers for the family. Yeah. Right. And so that's what we decided to do many years ago instead of paying two huge, I mean, I know people, I know people at Rock Creek that have car payments that are pushing a thousand a month. And yeah. I just, I it gives me just like the hair on the back, of what little hair I have left <laughs> stands up. I'm like a thousand dollars for a car. Yeah. That's yeah. just, yeah. I mean, I used to Crazy. pay 500 a month for rent yeah. when we got married. And so I, I just physically and, and spiritually cannot live like that because I want to be free mm-hmm. to give. And I'm not saying that nice vehicles are wrong. Yes, I understand. But I'm saying to you straight up, I can't afford that yeah. and right. still be a giver. Right. Yes. I can't afford that and still see a need and meet the need. Now, I can still, I could afford that. And, but not have the flexibility and the freedom to do those things. And so what you guys know, what I know, is money is a horrible master. Yep. Oh, it's horrible. Money is to be, we're, it's to be a slave to us, not the master. That's and right. And as recited many times in his, in his videos we watch, right. he says that many times, don't and, be a slave to your master. And Jesus yeah. clearly talks about it in Matthew 6. Yes. And, and so it, here's the thing. Money cannot love you back. It just cannot. It doesn't have the ability to love you back. Mm -hmm. And everything that God tells us in his word about how to handle our finances, how to handle the management of everything that God has given to us, the devil tells us the same thing, but he tells it to us in a lie. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, that thing right there will love you back. Oh, your life will be fulfilled if you have that. Mm -hmm. My life is never more fulfilled than when I'm giving to someone else, when I'm giving to the kingdom of God. That's when I feel the most fulfillment and the most joy. And I'm just very fortunate. I'm married to a woman who feels the same way. And we move together, united on that, because we've made the decision that we will not be a slave 
to our possessions, our possessions will be our slave and we will be master over them. Right. right. And so even, even with our kids, we've had, you know, even when we were raising Haley and Ryder, there was just some things that Haley and Ryder, we just weren't going to do. Right. Yep. You're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. Yep. And you're not going to do that, but you can do this. And I remember <laughs> even with Haley, she's like, yeah, but, but, but if I don't do those things, I won't be able to do that. Mm -hmm. To which I looked at her and said, you understand you're never going to be a professional softball player. Yeah. That, that's not the end game in your life. But everybody was saying, you need to spend thousands of dollars to be on a traveling team and do that. I'm like, at the end of the day, you're not going to be a professional softball player. You know, now she's in ministry. Right. Yep. And you know now what she says to me? Thank you for the fit, the spiritual investment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking me to youth camp, to to investing in me spiritually, because yes. now that's what really matters. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so one of the things that I know you guys do, and I love seeing it. It's a glass jar. Yes. Yes. Tell me about the big <laughs> glass jar. <laughs> well, you, you go that's that my one. deal. That is, um, and I love this. So one of the things we do in class is. Um, we ask people to stop using plastic and go to money. Go to cash. Oh, yeah. Because cash is emotional. It hurts. It hurts. So if you ever had dollars in your pocket, you know, some people say, oh, it burns a hole in my pocket. But if you're really trying to get out and do things to you to pay that dollar down or yeah. that $6 down for a Starbucks or right, whatever, right. you know, gets really emotional if you think yeah. about it. So what we ask them to do and help them get out of debt is to um, cut up the credit cards. And this is really interesting when we go through this because we actually have a shredder. So we have them shredded. It makes this awesome sound. <laughs> and we take all of these shredded up credit cards and we put it in the jar. And the jar says debt free. And it's a reminder. We have it up in front of the classroom and we have it there for a reminder and a visual for everybody to see you can be debt free, but you gotta get rid of the plastic. You got to get rid of this. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we make a really huge yep. production about it. When somebody actually gets up to do it, and it's really it's really fun to watch them when they first you know get up to go do it, and it's so hesitant <laughs> and all of this, and then everybody stands up and claps yeah. because you got to celebrate the small steps. Yeah. And that's one of the first steps. I mean, you know, yeah, if you've got. You still have to pay the, you know, the balance off either if there is a balance. Yeah, shredding it doesn't mean the balance no, goes no, away, that's right? true. But it that's takes true. away the temptation yeah. of yeah. using it again, yeah. and that's why building, you know, a thousand dollar mercy fund is the first thing that is, you know, that in budgeting. So you know where you, your money is going. You put a name on every dollar, like I did said earlier, you know, it's where you know where that's going, yeah. and you build in that plan, giving, saving, so you get that thousand dollars. So. Right now, in most cases, in a lot of families' cases, their credit card is their emergency fund. Oh, uh, yes. If they have an issue, they have a problem, the next thing you know, how did we get $5,000 yeah. on that credit card? Yeah, that's uh, that's become the the go-to right mm -hmm. now for a lot of people. That's how mm -hmm. they're surviving. Yeah, it is. Um, but on the back side of that, it that, that debt's going to come. It's going to go away. It's it not going to go away. And, you know, I, I, I know for me, when I was younger, um, Till we kind of got our arms around our finances, I was, I was the guy that would pull the credit card out immediately because I was. It was like I was spending money that I didn't have, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's so much easier to spend money you they don't have than money you do have. They make very it very convenient. convenient. Yeah, and, and, and they now market it. Yeah, and now we're living in a culture that's trying to go cashless. Oh, yes. There's such a push to be yeah. a cashless society, and Dave even talks about in FPU that the, the debit cards are just as dangerous yes. as, the, yes. as the credit right. card because, um, and I know, I know because I've done it, and if you ever take FPU, you'll learn about the envelope system. Yep. Yes. And so you, you, you have an envelope for groceries, and yep. you put your cash in that envelope for groceries, and that's what you spend. It also keeps you from grabbing 100 different things off the rack right. that you don't need yeah. because Stick you only have a budget. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know somebody's thinking right now, I don't want to live that way. That's, that's too much. That's too hard. Well, I'll say this. You can either live like no one else or you can live like, like no one else. else. And so if you want to get, and, and, and I know somebody else is watching going, oh, I'm never going to get to retirement age. That's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. Thought the same we thing. We thought the same thing. I'm, you know? I'm sitting here looking at my stuff going, I'm 50, and I mm -hmm. should have been thinking about this 20 years ago. Yes. Not now. Yes. Right. And so 
I mean, you're just, you know, you just see it. You just see that we live in such a consumer mentality culture that, that what I have is not good enough because mm -hmm. something better is going to come out in two years. I remember as a kid thinking she'll go out with me if I drive that car, yeah. you know, and that carries into, you know, and, or my, my buddy's got that toy and I want to have a better toy. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I've learned. Here's what I've learned. I've always learned. I always thought it would be better to be that guy that had that thing. But I've, been, I've learned it's always better to know the person that has the swimming pool in their backyard rather than actually having the swimming pool in their backyard. Because <laughs> they have to pay for the chemicals. They have to pay for the cleaning. The electric uh, bill, the whole nine yeah, They didn't run bill. for free. <laughs> and they can invite me over and I can yeah, swim in their right. pool. Or, or right. um, it's always more fun and easier to fish in the boat that someone else owns than what you own, yeah. you can put gas in the boat for them if they'll take you fishing. Yeah, And that's so, the cheap side. Yeah, no, yeah, if you have a boat or you have a pool, I'm not being down no, on no. you. Listen, we've I, had the, we've, absolutely. Boat, we've had the absolutely. pool. Stuff. Jesus came to give us life and to give it to us in abundance. Yes. That's right. He didn't come to bum us out. He came to bless us up. Yep. And and for, for us to sit here and say, God doesn't want you to have anything nice, that that is nope. not no. scriptural. No. But I here's what I found. The people in my life that have the most in their life is people who have given away most of what they have mm -hmm. their entire life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The people that are the greatest blessed people that I know are people who are givers, mm -hmm. are yep. generous people, yep. and God just keeps dumping it on them. Yep. Yep. But the Bible says that he'll throw up the, open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing on us so much that we cannot contain it yep. when we're faithful to him and we trust him with 100% of us. That's right. the last lesson of number nine lesson is giving. And that, you know, that's, that's how he ends it. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, throughout this thing, the whole thing, the other draw to, for us to that is, it is faith, faith based, the whole program. Yeah. And there's scripture throughout the whole, you know, Proverbs. Oh, pro Proverbs. Yeah. Proverbs is uh, well. Proverbs is financial loaded, guide. loaded with yes. financial. That's the first uh, financial guide. Yes. I mean, Solomon wrote it to his son, and and he wrote some. You know, Proverbs three, five, and six is probably a very popular. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, yep. lean not on your own mm -hmm. understanding, and all your ways acknowledge Him, yep. and He will make your path straight. Yep. A lot of people think that's about trusting God in in, in crisis or in adversity or in a moment of loss. It's talking about money. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a financial verse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to ask you a couple more questions but before I get there. I've got something, and it's on my mind, and the Holy Spirit probably just put it there. And so like I always say, if he put it there, I'm going to say it. Okay. Um, I really think that the debt that people are carrying in this country, and in particular in our church, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the debt that they're carrying from things that they didn't have to have or things that they were exuberant in their in their purchasing where they could have done something different with it. But even greater in our entire nation, we're the most blessed nation in the world. Right. We have the resources in our country to get the gospel to every language group in the world that has not heard the name of Jesus. See, while we as Americans are waiting on Jesus' second coming, there's a lot of people in the world that have never heard about his first. Yep. Right. Yes. And I think the enemy, the devil knows, if I can put Americans in financial bondage, then they themselves cannot do what God has called them to do with the blessings and the resources that God has given to them to ultimately get the gospel that's to good. every single person that hasn't heard the name of Jesus. That's Agreed. good. And so when that's why when I go to the Dominican or I go to India, or I go to the Philippines, you don't see this materialistic consumerism mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The devil has put Americans in bondage financially because he knows Americans have the power financially to get the gospel to the ends of the world. That all came from the Holy Spirit just now. It just popped through my good. head right. that good. when I see people strapped and then I see a need arise, and I watch people weep because they can't give to the need because they're strapped. Yeah. That's when I see the enemy has won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and we've got to get out of that. So the way to get out of that is to get financial peace. Because it gives hope. Yes. It yes. gives you hope back. And yeah. I think that's what happens with people that are in debt. They have they have no hope. 
you know, when's the last time that someone actually dreamt about something and how, how to get there? Yeah. You know, it's okay to dream. Yeah. It's okay to have those dreams and you can get there someday. I think something in this generation that's missing is um, the definition of sacrifice. Mm. Sometimes it takes sacrifice, live like no one else, yeah, yeah. And sacrifice so you can live yeah. and have those blessings later on. You know, a lot of this generation is, I want it now. Yeah. You know, they want the next shining thing, as you talked about, but it's right now. Yeah. And it's not waiting until they have saved up the cash and to actually go and pay cash. I cannot tell you the feeling it was for us to go buy a car with cash. That's crazy. Now, we wrote a check, you know, right, but, right. but, but, still it, it's but it, was, okay. it was planned, it was placed. And we were able to do that and to be able to lay that down. I wish you could have seen the look on the car salesman's face. Imagine. He was like, I can imagine. Is this real? Yes. You want to go check it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, he said, how are you going to finance this? And I pulled up shepherds of that right there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, it, it was a wonderful yeah. feeling for us because that's the first time we had ever done it. Yeah. So I think that the lesson is, one, th this course gives hope. Yeah. It helps you learn how to sacrifice. Yeah. Um, and it gives you a path to, in the end, to be able to give like no one else yeah, as yes. well. Yeah. So um, something just popped in my head when you were talking about buying that car. Yeah. I, I don't know that everybody, maybe, maybe not everybody totally understands this, mm -hmm. but there is buying power when you use cash. Oh, yes. Yeah. You don't have when you finance. Yeah, that is true. Um, when, when we purchased Ryder's car, for his senior year of high school. He had saved up money that he had worked in the summer months um, with, with working for my dad in air conditioning. He had saved up. And then we had money that we were gonna give to him out of our savings account for his graduation present. And we decided to buy this 2010 Mustang for him back in 2017. Mm -hmm. It was a seven-year-old car. I told him do all the research, find the car, yeah. It's got to be at this price range or under. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he found a car that was 2000 more than what mm -hmm. I told him he had his price range for. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, well, we'll go look at it. It was way down in, it was like Duncanville. Yeah. Yeah. I said, we'll go look at it, but it's out of your price range for what your mom and I are going to put in cash and what you're going to put in cash. We went down there. And when I uh, dealt and bargained with the salesman, when I showed him in my pocket what I had, mm -hmm. a wad of a hundreds, yeah. mm -hmm. I got that car for Ryder's price amount versus what they were asking because they were willing to sell it knowing they were gonna get cash in that moment yeah. in the financial process. So yes. cash has power. It does. That's right. It has negative power or it has positive power. Yeah. You make the decision you which, which the power decision. it has, yeah. Yeah, I right. did my, our, my son, our son when he was, 17 way back that's the lesson i taught him he had to earn his money save his money yeah we went to a, you know a car lot this was a car lot and he was looking and the amount of money they were asking he goes i only got 2500 dollars." yeah you know and i mean that was sick i mean he was 43 now so that was years ago yeah, yeah. Time so ago. He, he goes i said tell him you're giving that much money he goes they want three thousand i said they'll tell you yes and they'll tell yeah. you no yeah they say no Go to some. We go yeah. look at something else, yeah. and he told them, and they said, "We'll take it." Yeah, you know. So it's the same, same yeah. kind of. And if they don't, watch this. It's not the end of the world. No. Maybe God didn't want you to have yeah. that. Yeah, maybe but but not. we. Here's what I found financially. I did. I've done this so many times. God shuts a door in my life, and I just kick the door open because that's what I want for yes. my life. Right. My life. I, instead of paying attention to God's closure of the door. I kick the door in and I yeah. and I just bypass God's will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I get myself in trouble, trouble. is because yeah. I did what I wanted for me rather than what God had for me. Yeah. There's good exactly. deals to be had if you go research and look for them. That's good stuff right <laughs> yeah. there. So um, if I wanted me or me and my wife, if I wanted to come and be a part of Financial Peace University, if I said, you know what, I'm going to make the step yes. towards freedom and towards peace. I, I'm going to... I'm tired of pilling my head at night with dollar signs running through my head. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want peace. I want freedom from this. And I know that it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a journey, but I'm willing to start the process. How do I get a, 
to be a part of this class? What do I do? Well, I didn't mention earlier, there is a, on the uh, Facebook pages, small groups, there is a site there and it has a link. You can go in there and join through that. And then okay. there's just a little link, it's got some numbers on it. Okay. And on the can, church's Facebook page? On the church's page? Facebook okay. page. Okay. There is a link okay. in that. All right. So when you pull it up, so you'll we'll see. Follow Rock Creek Church on Facebook. Go to groups. Go to groups. And the Facebook. Okay. Right. And it'll pull up. And it's, it's a FPU Financial Peace page. Okay. And there's a link on there. Okay. So when I register for FPU, I'm not registering with Rock Creek. I'm actually going through Financial Peace. You're Pieces going through Financial Peace. Okay. Yes. And then there is a fee. Yes. And it's $99, no, I believe? It has you know? gone up. Okay. It's $129. Yeah, $129. $129. Now. $129 investment. Yes. Right. They can change your life. Right. Okay. Yes. But we just happen to have seven kits. Okay. At $99. Okay. Okay. So right. if someone is interested in this, okay. if they will seek us out, okay. we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. Can, can they email you? Absolutely. What's your email address? It's Heidi at Rock Creek. TX.church. Imagine that. Yeah. Heidi at Rock Creek TX.church. They can first come, first serve on the seven yes. kits that you yes. have for $99. Then after those are gone, it's $129. Yes. But right. even then, it's, an, it's, a small yes. Investment. it's a small investment. Small and all investment. that money goes to buy the kit. None of that money goes to the church. Absolutely. None of that money goes to you. No. The, the, the expenses of utilities for the building and all that, the church absorbs all of that because yes. uh, mm-hmm. we want to make this available. And uh, we have it right out there in the building in the right multi-purpose the room. Yes. In the middle of the COVID season, we're still going to have yes, it we're still because we can social it. distance. We can, we can take the class. We'll take the precautions right. to do what we need to do. Yeah. We had to go to Zoom in the last three yeah. lessons, and it, it it's just, just not the it's same. Not, it's it lost not. Us. We've had we had two people that yeah. didn't finish. Not the same. It's just not the same. We're gonna hear a little sermon about that again this Sunday. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that the. Um, the class is 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 situated though it's video driven. Yes. yes. For the first hour or whatever, however right. long the video, right. most of them are around an hour. Right. And it's driven with that, yeah. and then we break into the, the groups. Big group. Well, okay. we actually we they change the format. Group. There's been changes. Oh. They've they've adapted. Mm-hmm. The first four lessons changed your last year. Okay. Okay. So they updated you know okay. that, and then the, one of the things they change is now unless we have if we have eighty and ninety people. We'll break it into a couple of sure, groups. Or sure, sure. So. But with we had sixteen, yeah, That's and we just stayed in the group, and we've yeah. been we found that, yeah. and it's just kind of where they where they marketed and looked at it, researched it, and said, you get more input when you stay in one group. Yeah, and and we saw that. If you have eighty or ninety people, you're going to have to go to the auditorium. Uh, yes, sir. Well, <laughs> that, I, already, I already have talked to a couple of people about how can we put the video in there. Yeah, because yeah. that's our backup yeah. plan. Yeah, we we yeah. we have the potential to yes, do that. That is the yeah. backup plan. Uh, well, super super thankful that you guys do that. And again, Facebook is one way you can register. The email, or you go to Rock Creek TX Church slash groups. You'll find right. Financial Peace University listed as one of our groups. We have our regular like co-ed groups that meet in homes, but then we have our three specialty yes. groups, Financial Peace, Re-Engaging, and Celebrate Recovery. All of them are there on the page yes. right. on our website. But uh, love you guys. It's been a joy to journey with you. I, I know you guys would, would agree with me that the next step is the next step. Yes. It's, it's being willing to, to get online, register mm-hmm. for it, or send Heidi an email, right. and literally take the step. As I talked to Rod last week about Celebrate Recovery, the the hardest 100 feet is the journey from the car to the door of the church. Absolutely. And and that may be the case for financial peace, but I promise you, if you'll get started, everything starts somewhere Mm -hmm. and at some point. And you can get to where you can live in peace if you'll take these measures. And and money will not be your master anymore. You will be its master. And we have... there's some videos coming out that yeah. the church will be showing here soon, and you'll see some and lives that excited. have been changed. Yeah. And you guys have a kiosk in the lobby. Yes. Yeah, that you'll we be will, at we Sunday. Will have yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yes. it's out in the lobby. There's a banner and your books right. and stuff. So okay. you can stop by there and see see them as well. So right. good. Yeah. So glad to have you guys in the studio. Thanks Thank for coming you. and joining us. Appreciate you it. You Thank God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you back here next week, Wednesday night, seven o'clock. God bless.